listen up. If you haven't watched me spoil Paranormal Activity 1 and Paranormal Activity 2, then you need to stop this video right the fuck now and go back and watch both of those so you know what the fuck I'm talking about. The fourth Paranormal Activity movie comes out at midnight, so I'm trying to get all you bastards caught up. So you know what's going on, so you aren't left out of the phenomenon that happens every Halloween. And if you don't go back and watch those videos, there will be a man waiting outside of your bedroom window tonight. And he will wait until you're asleep, and he will break into your house and rip your fucking spinal cords out of your asshole. This is over and I'm sick of it. So the movie starts out and this couple is painting this nursery because they're getting ready to have a baby and it turns out that it's Christy and Daniel and they're getting ready for Hunter's arrival. Katie and Mika just moved in together so she brings some boxes over to Christy's house that she can't really fit in their new apartment. Then it fast forwards to when the house gets broken into in 2006. One of the boxes that Katie brought over was full of tapes and that box of tapes is missing. Someone, we don't know who, we just see them pressing play, starts watching the tapes and then we are taken back to 1988. Christy and Katie are now younger, like in the 7 to 11 age range, and it's Katie's birthday. We meet their mom, Julie, and then their stepdad, whose name is Dennis. Dennis is a photographer, and he starts going through these wedding photos that he took, and then he starts hearing noises around the house. He goes upstairs, and then one of the girls' toys turns on by itself, and then there's a noise downstairs, and then behind him, this little closet door opens. They did not waste time getting to the creepy shit in this third installment. That night, Dennis and Julie are smoking a joint. His wife gets the munchies and then this bitch starts eating cornflakes and then they start having sex. They're in the middle of foreplay and then boner killer. There's a fucking earthquake and dust starts falling from the ceiling and the house is shaking and shit. As the dust is falling, the camera gets knocked over and then you see some of the dust kind of just stop in the middle of the air. And after you stare at it for a while, you realize that it's the outline of a person. Dennis shows that to Julie and she's like, boy bye. So Dennis shows his friend Randy and then they decide to just set up cameras all over the house. On night one, the little closet in the girls room opens and Christy starts having a conversation with Toby. Dennis sees this and he asks Christy about Toby and she tells him that Toby is old and tall and that if she tells any of his secrets, she won't be safe. Dennis tells this to Julie and she just dismisses it as Christy having an active imagination. Excuse the fuck out of me, but if my kids were talking to me about some old, tall ass man who would threaten their safety if they told me his secrets, Girl, somebody's Ghostbusters would be making a call to my house and some therapy sessions would be getting scheduled. The next day, Julie's mom is giving her shit and saying that she can do better than Dennis and then she starts pressuring her to have another baby. On night eight, Christy is running all around the fucking house and climbing on tables and shit. The next day, Julie asks Christy about Toby and she says, Ask him yourself, he's standing right beside you. On night 10, Julie goes to the kitchen to make a snack and then one of the light bulbs in the living room just explodes. The next day, Katie starts making fun of Christy saying that only babies have imaginary friends and that Toby isn't real. And Christy's like, bitch, he is real, he's in the closet. So Katie crawls her ass into the closet and then the door slams shut. The parents go out for the night and then the babysitter Lisa comes over. She tells the girls a ghost story with like a sheet covering her whole body and then she puts them to bed. So Lisa is doing her homework in the kitchen and then somebody is in the living room standing under a sheet. The sheet figure gets closer and closer to Lisa, but then when she turns around, the sheet just drops to the ground and nobody is under it. Lisa goes upstairs to check on the girls, but then she hears a noise from the closet, so she walks over to the closet to check it out, and then there's a loud ass bang from inside the closet. That bitch said, fuck the kids, and power walked back down the stairs. Dennis sees everything that happens to Lisa on camera and shows Randy. On night 13, Christy stares at her parents sleeping for two hours. Then when she gets back upstairs to her bedroom, she tells Toby that she doesn't want to talk to him anymore. The next day, Dennis checks out the closet and he sees like all these markings on the wall and then it turns out that Christy has a really high fever. Dennis and Julie take Christy to the hospital and Randy comes over to watch Katie. They start playing Bloody Mary in the bathroom and shit gets so real. While the lights are off, Randy gets slashed in the stomach and then a dark ass shadow flies by the door and then the doorknob starts jingling like somebody's trying to get in. Once it stops, Randy opens the door and then the girl's coffee table just goes flying across the room. When Dennis gets home, Randy tells him what happened and he's like, you are not fucking with Casper the ghost. You need to tell Julie and you need to get the fuck out. Then Dennis discovers that the markings in the closet are actually the symbol of a witch's coven. Katie is chasing Christy around the house cause they're just playing 
playing and then Katie runs into something invisible which then yanks her ponytail and pulls that bitch off the ground. On night 14, the TV comes on in the parents' room and it's blaring static. The closet door opens in the girls' room and then their toys start falling and moving around. Katie wakes up Christy and Christy says, Toby's here. Katie starts screaming for her mom and then gets dragged into the closet. Christy yells, I'll do it! And then everything stops. The next day, Christy asks Julie if they can go to their grandmother's house and Julie says no. So Julie's in the kitchen later that day and then someone knocks on the door and she goes to answer the door but nobody is there. When she walks back into the kitchen, everything has disappeared. And then three seconds later, the table, the dishes, and every fucking thing that was in the kitchen comes crashing down from the ceiling. Julie's like, we gotta get the fuck out of here. So the family goes to grandma's house. Grandma is named Lois and she's playing dress up with the girls in wedding dresses and when Julie sees this, she asks Christy, who is the lucky guy? And Christy says, Toby. Julie gets hella pissed off and says she never wants to hear Toby's name ever again. Later that night, everyone is asleep and then there's some loud ass noises coming from downstairs. It wakes up Dennis and Julie, so Julie goes to check on Lois because she says sometimes she has problems sleeping. Grandma's getting crunk! Julie never comes back, so Dennis gets worried and then he's going to look for Julie and then discovers that the girls aren't in bed either. He searches all over the house for everyone and then he goes outside to a shed. He opens the door and this shed is full of old ass wrinkly bitches straight out of Salem. He runs back in the house and all the witches are chasing him and then he sees Julie's ass levitating at the top of the stairs and then her whole body just flings at him. Christy comes out of nowhere and her and Dennis go and hide in a closet but then somebody starts trying to get in. Dennis opens the door and a black shadow shoots across the hallway. Dennis and Christy finally leave the closet and then they find Katie crouched over by the stairs looking at her mom's body. Dennis tries to get Katie and then she turns around and attacks him. Dennis is thrown across the living room and then he tries to crawl back to Katie but then then Lois pops up out of nowhere and stands in between them. There is the overwhelming sound of angry ass growling and then Dennis's entire body snaps in half. Lois takes Katie and Christy upstairs, but not before Christy turns around and says, come on, Toby. Now see, this whole family is just fucked the fuck up. So what have we learned from the first three movies? Katie and Christy's grandmother is a demon worshiping bitch. She made a deal with the demon at the expense of the firstborn male of her family. So Christy finally gives birth to a boy whose name is Hunter. So the demon goes after Hunter. But then Christy's husband transfers the demon to Katie, who then kills her boyfriend Christy and Christy's husband, and then kidnaps the fucking baby. But where is the baby? And where is Katie? Paranormal Activity 4? Hits theaters at midnight. Go see it this weekend, and I'll be spoiling it for you. Peace out, home skillet biscuits. <laughs>